Hey, ESPN, I'm Jack. I'm the co-founder of Crack.com. And I'm Miles, a former lobbyist that loves soccer and gets very nervous when I'm pulled over by the police. And we're the hosts of The Daily Zeitgeist, a daily comedic news podcast that covers politics, pop culture, and we're both big sports fans. I'm actually named after my grandfather, legendary NBA coach Dr. Jack Ramsey. Oh, well, I'm named after Miles Davis, a legendary heroin addict who is not my grandfather. It's not a competition. So search The Daily Zeitgeist on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen Rose. What up, Duff? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. And we... Center stage on the mic. Oh, Reggie. And we putting it on wax. Little slow, Reg. Little slow. Uh, what do we do? You're the fine individual that supported this program for six years. Exactly what they want, when they want it. Quality content, especially for our podcast family. Now, so I want to take everybody behind the curtain on this time because we always give exclusive content to our podcast listeners. You know, and we'll also give you a little behind the scenes. Here's what Reggie's going to do. Reggie's going to edit out that part where he messed up right there. <laughs> and now that I brought it up, he can't. And that's one of the reasons I brought it up. Look, we all make mistakes. Reggie's just a little late, little late on the button. Like, it's like, come on now. Like, we do the same thing every single day, Reg. Another thing I want to point out, Reggie's not the only producer of this show, everybody. You know? Like, we've got a staff of, like, eight people. You know, the staff has grown since we got to the afternoon. And one thing that happened when we reached the afternoon is we have a little more editorial oversight. Lisa. We wanted to put the uh, breast milk brownie topic in the A block, but they wouldn't let us. You know, <laughs> can't put the breast milk brownies in the A block. I understand. <laughs> you can't argue for that one. Like, I'm not going to stand on a table and be like, we need to have the breast milk brownies in the A block. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, because we haven't gotten to the breast milk brownies topic yet, just trust me, there'll be some discussion of breast milk brownies later on in the show. Very nutritious. Very nutritious. Yeah. Also, we had an experiment with Durag Jalen, who I believe some of Durag Jalen's content made it to the audio podcast. But <laughs> Durag Jalen has yet to make his television debut because the visual of Durag Jalen was just a little jarring. It was a little jarring. A little jarring. It all depends on who's watching. It remi- <laughs> he reminds me of Anton from Living Color. The reason why you didn't get a chance to see Durag Jalen on television with his ripped undershirt and his do-rag is because I wasn't holding the bat. That's the only thing I was missing. Do you know what do-rag Jalen reminds me of? It reminds me of cooking pizzas, because that's what I'll be doing if do-rag Jalen ends up on television. <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. I still got it, though. I will cook a mean pizza. You come over to my house, I'll hook you up. I'm not making the dough from scratch, though. I'm going to Trader Joe's for the dough. <laughs> First thing I'm going to talk about in the podcast exclusive section, Andrew Wiggins says that he deserves nothing less than a maximum contract. If you start looking at the Timberwolves, how they're constructed, the offseason moves that they've made, do you think they will give Andrew Wiggins a maximum contract? I continue to stress, you don't get what you deserve in life. You get what you have the leverage to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm hearing his name being tossed around in trade rumors, possibly for Kyrie Irving. Of course. And you know what that just did? Gave him more leverage. And when you look at the Timberwolves, he had a real safe and secure job. He was the, the centerpiece that they were building around. And then all of a sudden, they fleeced the bulls of Jimmy Butler. And you're Andrew Wiggins. You're calling your agent like, wait a second. Huh. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me get this straight. Like, wait a minute. Wait. W-A-Y-N-E-N-T. <laughs> wait, a minute. Yeah. wait a minute. Like, <laughs> Jimmy Butler's on the team now. And he has a lot of the same skills that I have. He's got a similar height that I have. That's a little bit of a concern. I do not know. And again, I think that they will. I do not know for a fact that they will give Andrew Wiggins a maximum contract. They probably should. But, you know, when you've got Jimmy Butler there, you can see ways in which they could part with Andrew Wiggins via trade or let somebody else overpay. Maple Jordan. What? Is that what they're calling him? Maple Jordan? They've been calling him that forever. That's a real thing. What? Stephon Marbury, who I sat next to you at the SBs. One of my favorite part was Steph Marbury just, just looking over at you and giving you the salute. You saluted back to Steph. 
Stephen Marbury says that it is a crime how little Derrick Rose got paid. Part of me kind of feels the same way. Do you feel like Derrick Rose is getting underpaid with $2.1 million next year for the Cavs? He planting the seed to create a harvest. That's truly what he's doing. An MVP level player, injuries obviously created a major setback. But when you look at the production last year, 18 points. Yes. Seeing to get his explosion back. And so now you go to Cleveland, you play on the big stage with LeBron James for a Cavs team that's likely to make it to the NBA Finals. Now all of a sudden, your big quarters, your big moments, your big games put you in a position to get a big deal. So I understand his level of thinking at this point. I have notifications set on my phone. You know, I've got ESPN and, you know, major news outlets like The Times and, and Complex Magazine, SB Nation and stuff like that. Like, I get a lot of, of, of news notifications on my phone to see what's going on. And a lot of them are about Kyrie Irving. I feel like Derrick Rose, every time he gets a Kyrie Irving news notification, he's like, tell me he got traded. Please, I hope he got traded. I really hope he got traded. Zero to 100, how much does Derrick Rose want Kyrie to get traded? 75? Oh, 100. Oh, 100. You think, oh, you don't think he wants to come off the bench? You think he's looking for an opportunity to back up Kyrie Irving or an opportunity to start with LeBron James? He's looking for an opportunity for us to have a remote control in our hand, LeBron James and Kevin Love on the wing, and him and Kyrie in the backcourt. Mm, not the best defensive backcourt. That's all I have to say about that. I would be a little concerned about Kyrie Irving and Derrick Rose trying to stop the two guards of another team, even in the Eastern Conference. So a lot of the news today is about this LeBron James workout in Las Vegas. It's him and Eric Bledsoe, Chris Paul, Derrick Rose, and Russell Westbrook. Obviously, if he's working out with Russell Westbrook, that means they're definitely going to play together next year. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. But do you find it curious that it's LeBron James and a bunch of point guards? I don't find it curious because for LeBron James, it's more than just getting a chance to work out. He has sons, they're playing in AAU, gets a chance to spend quality time with the fam. Vegas never closes. What happens there stays there. Your body clock is when you wake up and when you go to sleep, in theory. So him getting a chance to work out with guards, to me, as a guy that's 6'8", 250, 60 pounds, it allows him to continue to try to work on his quickness and be able to get around those guys because him working out with guys his size or a little bit bigger, that probably doesn't necessarily push him the way going against guys that are quicker will in doing drills and seeing how they're able to explode and get it done in the summertime. Why is it not a bigger story that every member of the Banana Boat Brotherhood could potentially be an unrestricted free agent at the end of next year? Like, no one's talking about this. Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul, Carmelo Anthony, and LeBron James could all be free agents at the end of this year, and no one's discussing that. Why aren't people making a bigger deal out of this? Hit the brakes. Okie dokie. We've been talking about the BBBs forever, and I'm not talking about the Better Business Bureau. I'm not talking about the big baller brand. We're talking about the Banana Bow Boys. When you say nobody's talking about it, that's not accurate. Nobody other than this program is talking about it. I don't know if they could all play on the same team next year without them really drastically lowering their salaries. But it's just interesting to think about. All of them on the group text, just throwing out some ideas. I it's one be of those surprised. things that you feel like you want to run with your homeboy until you're actually playing on the same squad with him. <laughs> that could change the dynamic of a relationship yeah, it's like, it's, a like, it's like having move, like your best friend, like, we'll be great roommates. Then y'all move in together, like, oh, I hate you and I want to murder you. <laughs> well, keep an eye on that because I wouldn't be surprised if it, at least two or three of them end up on the same team at the end of next year. Keep an eye on that. Also, everybody's talking about this extension that Chris Paul is going to sign with the Rockets. Haven't heard too much about that recently. One of the things we do on this program is give the people what they want. Even during our podcast exclusive section is we can't put too many voicemails into the actual television show. So if you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave us voicemails. We'll play them on the show like this. Hey, Jalen Jacoby. This is Zach from San Antonio. Um, love the show. New fan. Kind of, kind of sort of been fan for about a year. Uh, consistent. Um, except when Jalen's gone. Honestly, sorry. But I have a question. Who will win? 
in a uh, rap battle. Busta Rhymes or Red Man? Get at me, please. Please, get at me. Uh, fan of the show. Yeah. Have a good day. Well, Zach listens to the show. So he knows where I stand on the answer to this question. I don't think that Red Man is the best MC of all time. But he's my favorite MC. That's what I have to say about that. He's my favorite. I enjoy listening to Red Man. I think that he's probably top 50 MCs, if you want to like break it down into like technicalities. But I really enjoy every one of his albums, and he's consistent. I love the fact that he, right now, if you follow him on social media, he is in a dirty, messy studio where he does all of the engineering himself and makes his own music. I just love Red Man. So definitely Red Man over Busta Rhymes. Big shout to Red Man. Reggie and Noble. the original Hit Squad, getting a chance to spend time and break bread with EPMD that you see on Over My Shoulder in East Islip, New York, Eric and Parrish making dollars and watching DOS Effects, Red Men, all coming to their own, was a beautiful time in rap music. His first joint that he appeared on for public consumption for the national audience was LL Rampage, and he ripped the track. Yep, yep, yep. Now, when you talk about Busta Rhyme, one of his favorite albums also was produced by somebody in that camp, DJ Scratch, mm. who's also family, and he kills his performances with the Jason mask if you've never seen it. Yep. And check him out on Scratch Vision anytime you want to. When you were in East Islip, was bread the only thing that was being broken up? Well, no, we were playing a lot of uh, in a NBA Live. Oh, okay. And okay. in the studio a lot. I understand. So, also, I have to say this, too. Redman and Larry Bird <laughs> is, are two people that me and David Jacoby both love equally. <laughs> but we had a draft like Dave Chappelle, and he loves them just as much, if not more, than me. So I kind of just act like I don't love them as much as I do. Because I would love to have a picture of Larry behind me. <laughs> not going to be able to do it. That's I me. I would love to have a picture of Reggie Noble behind me. But Jacoby is not having it. A lot of people don't know that Reggie, who produces this show, is actually Redman. He takes time out of his day because he, he's got audio abilities. You know what I mean? We just needed somebody that we trusted that got the ethos of the show. So we just made an offer to Redman. He didn't have too much else going on. He's like, fine, I got this. No problem. Let's listen Eli, to pay me in. Next question. Yeah. Let's listen to another voicemail. Hey, Dylan, Jacoby. This is me at Sean out of Charlotte. How good are the Thunder going to be with Paul George? Let's break this down. The question is, how good are the Thunder going to be with Paul George? Last year, they were the sixth seed. They've got a better team by adding Paul George. How can you, high can you see them climbing in the seeding in the Western Conference? I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the top four. Really? Paul George what? is really an underrated performer. I've been calling him a top 12 player for the last couple of years. And so once he got injured and it was a horrific injury, it obviously is going to take him time to truly get back to that level. Last year, I saw those flashes after he got off to a slow start. I think he's going to hit the ground running in OKC. Yep. And they're going to be a great two-way team. Yep. Getting up and down the floor, making plays on both ends, getting steals. I really love the dynamic of those guys running together. They may not be the best duo in the game, nope. but I think they're going to be my favorite. Ooh. We'll see. I need to see. I need to see some tape before I start deciding who my favorite duo is. Because you know, James Harden and Chris Paul will be my favorite duo. Just to watch how mad Chris Paul gets at James Harden. Like that relationship is not going to go great. <laughs> and we all think it's cool now. They're playing yep. pickup together or whatever. It's just Los Angeles. Yep. But just wait until James Harden misses some defensive assignments. Just wait until he dribbles down and takes some shots when Chris Paul feels like he's open and they want to run the offense. <laughs> just wait until that starts happening. You know. And just wait until all of a sudden there's rumors around the locker room that James Harden was at the strip club until three am and he doesn't play that well in the first or second quarter just wait for that to start happening and we'll just see how dynamic that duo in houston is going to be i disagree with you james Harden, don't change a thing you got 200 million dollars from adidas you got 200 million dollars from houston for playing basketball do not stop your extracurricular activities and don't shave your beard let's listen to another voicemail 
Okay, my my comment is, how do you figure LeBron James is still the greatest if he went head up with KD? We all saw it, and KD got the better of him and walked away with the title. That doesn't make sense that now is this day and time that people like Stephen A. Smith, which he's going to always be on LeBron's, you know, job, can still say after watching that, great, and then they got beat four to one. This wasn't a repeat of last year. So how is it that LeBron James is still the best player in the NBA? Why hasn't KD taken that title? Thank you for the call. Appreciate the love. A couple of things. There's, a, a, there's been a couple of Mondays in, the, in my life where I woke up and I was like, I'm the best player in the world. <laughs> you know why? I was player of the week. Best player in the and world. And so there's a reason why the NBA has player of the week, player of the month. Player of the year for the regular season, that was Russell Westbrook, and finals MVP, which is KD. So I understand your frame of reference. Look at it like playing king of the court. Right now, KD does have the title, but LeBron is clearly the best overall player. He only averaged a triple-double. And if you switch the teams... Yes. I think the Golden State Warriors still would have won, and LeBron James probably still would have been finals MVP. Exactly. And I, I, I can only simply answer this question by saying this, is I believe that LeBron James is the best player in the game because I watch a lot of NBA basketball. Like, there's just certain things that, you, that won't end up in the stat sheet. The analytics aren't going to express. It's just when he is in the game, he is clearly the most dominant player there. He doesn't have the team around him that KD does that uplifts him into the stature that you mentioned. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. The people want us to start the show with Kyrie Irving updates. The people want us to talk about LeBron James. We're not going to give the people what they want this segment. We're tired of talking about LeBron and Kyrie, so we're going to start the show with... Odell Beckham Jr. He was on the Uninterrupted Network, and he had some very interesting things to say about his future salary. Let's listen. It's like it's like the elephant in the room, and you know you don't want to talk about it. And I've gotten to the point in my life where like, nah, I'm gonna. There's no need to not talk about it. I believe that I will be. Hopefully, not just the highest paid receiver in the league, but the highest paid. Period. He doesn't want to be the highest paid wide receiver. He wants to be the highest paid player in the NFL, period. What's your reaction to this This from Odell Beckham Jr.? You know, I continue to stress the score of the game and the game of life. So there's a couple of ways you can look at these comments. By the way, it doesn't take much valor for somebody to come out and say they want to be the highest paid. We all do. Everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants to be the highest paid. No one out there is like, you know what, I'm good. I don't want to get paid any more money. I'm fine. Every single person with a job wants to get paid more money. With that being said, so there are the people who are the straight lace sports fans are going to say, well, he's more worried about the money. Why is he not talking about team success? Mm -hmm. Winning Super Bowls or continuing to build on what the team was able to do last year by making it to the playoffs for the first time in a handful of years. But the way the salary structure is in the NFL, when you have a prospect that comes out and outplays expectations early the way he has, yep. and he still is on a rookie deal, it does have you looking around the league, comparing salaries, and rightfully so in this situation. So I did a little research for this topic. You know, we don't like to do too much research for this show. But I remember last season, remember Odell Beckham had a rough start. and He was kicking the net. And, you know, it was like, is Odell Beckham worth all the trouble? But if you look at his production... It's consistent and it's excellent. You know what I mean? Because we all remember the off-field stuff and the Drake's house and the Khloe Kardashian and the shirtless trip to Miami. But you look at his actual production on the field and it's like, huh, this guy does deserve to get paid a lot more than just under $2 million he's getting paid this year. Could you see him overtaking Antonio Brown as the highest paid wide receiver? It will happen as time progresses. But again, it's... It's basically irrelevant to start judging players based on their production and their salary and their salary cap driven sport yep. like the NFL or the NBA because those are the only two sports we have this conversation in. 
The NHL also does have a salary cap, but you look at someone like Steph Curry, who was the unanimous MVP, was changing the way the game is played, and he was getting paid way less than his own teammates. But with Odell Beckham Jr., it's only a matter of time before he does get paid. Like, it's only a matter of time. There's some calculations that his next contract could be worth about $100 million, taking him up to about $20 million a year. Do you think he's worth that type of a deal? You're only worth what somebody's willing to pay you and what the market can bear. Yep. And so the unique thing about being a football player is those salaries have been reserved for quarterbacks mm. because that's considered the glamour position. But you're going to start to see more and more players that have the cachet that he's been able to attract that put himself in a position to earn that level of salary. This is why you see players like Le'Veon Bell of the Pittsburgh Steelers still holding out. He's like, wait a minute. I'm one of the best running backs mm -hmm. in the game. Also one, I'm of, the one of the best receivers, receivers in the league. <laughs> yep. Can I live? Ask Big Ben. Ask Big Ben if he wants to be on the field. How about that? <laughs> Ask Big Ben if he wants to be on the field, please. <laughs> yep. Well, someone who's no longer going to be getting an NFL salary at all is a gentleman you may not have heard of, an offensive lineman for the Ravens named John Urschel. He's 26 years old, and he just recently announced that he is retiring from the NFL. He's healthy. He's able to play. He's just decided it's not for him. He's going to pursue his mathematics degree at MIT. For those of you who don't know, MIT is one of the hardest colleges to get into in the world. He also has a fiance, and they're expecting a child. This all comes in the wake of the big CTE report that was published I believe by the New York Times. What do you make of John Urschel's early retirement? Maturity. And this is what happens as you start to grow up. You start to try to figure out what's important in life. And being an athlete and now working in the media and being on television a lot, fame and celebrity can be a drug. And a lot of times, are you doing it because of what comes with it? Or are you doing it because this is what drives you and what truly makes you happy? And so I always applaud somebody who's able to take a step back and look at the big picture of what's important in life. You talked about somebody wanting to be more educated. Mm -hmm. You talked about somebody embracing family. You talked about somebody that wants a quality of life and longevity. We talk a lot about CTE and the effects of playing football and those are real. But for him to step back and look at himself and say, I appreciate all of the things that football have given me, but there's more to me than being a jock. I continue to embrace people who had a level of strength and discipline. And also getting a mathematics degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that sets you up for a pretty, pretty good career in its own right. One that has a lot more longevity than an NFL career. He was making under a million dollars. Like it's not like he was getting paid $15 million and left it all behind. And he's looking at it saying, you know what? I'm about to have a child. I'm going to be a dad. I want to be at my child's high school graduation. I want to be at the college graduation. I'm going to be doing this dad thing for my entire life. And I do not want to my brain to be affected and to hurt my ability to be a father as I grow up. Little wrinkle on this one. His fiance that is now pregnant, former Grantland writer, Louisa Thomas. Grantland <laughs> lives on. Grantland is everywhere. Big shout to Louisa Thomas. Congratulations. And I kind of love this from John Urschel. This is something that he played football his entire life. You have to imagine when he was younger, he was a big guy. He was put onto the football field. And then at some point, someone said, you can make money playing football. And he did that. He's went through his entire life as this track to the NFL, this track to play football, the season, the off season, football, football, football. He said, you know what? I'm getting off this train and now I'm going to be at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology solving math problems. Did you know that MIT stood for Massachusetts Institute of Technology? Nope. I did not. Thank you for sharing that verbiage and words of wisdom for somebody like me. I might give up this program and enroll as well. <laughs> I would love to see your application. <laughs> Finally, USC head coach Clay Helton had this to say about OJ Simpson's role on the USC football team. Quote, Right now with USC, what the administration and the athletic department have said is no. OJ will not be a part of our functions. Are they being too hard on OJ Simpson? I think they are. Here's the thing. Like, at this point, he's a free man. He's paid his debt to society. He's an alum of your university. Get your nose out of the air, USC. Yep. 
I understand that he has a checkered past, but if you look a lot deeper into what some people have probably done for that university or for other schools, I don't think now all of a sudden he should not be allowed to be a welcome member of the family. I think they're turning their back on him. I understand how you could feel that way. However, when you say he has a checkered pass, it is a lot of checkers. Like, there's checkers on checkers on checkers. King me, double king me, triple king me. I mean, there's a lot of checkers, Mr. Rose, and I know you know exactly what I'm referring to. Do I believe that he probably killed two people? Yeah, I believe that. And if you believe that at USC, maybe you don't want to embrace that and you and sort of like, you know, use OJ Simpson to be a sort of figurehead or any sort of ambassador to the University of USC. So you know what happens when you do this news. All he's going to do now is buy a ticket and show up. Mm. Yep. See, all you have to do is just let him live. Yep. And yep. He wasn't going to probably be the guy that hopes to stand on the sideline week one and sure? be an ambassador for the program. Nope. He's probably trying to figure out a way to get his life back in order. And I understand the frame of reference and that line of thinking. But yep. I think once you put it out there for public consumption, now he probably sits back and be like, you know what? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a ticket and be at the game. And plus, my nephew plays for UCLA, so I'm not rolling with USC anyway. What's your nephew's name? Don't worry about it. (laughs) You're the best. Jalen, LeBron James is working out. You'll never believe this, but LeBron James is in Las Vegas right now working on his basketball game with Russell Westbrook. This definitely means that him and Russell Westbrook are going to play on the Lakers together next year, right? Definitely, right? It's exactly what this means, right? It's exactly what this means. I mean, why would you ever work out with somebody unless you were going to guarantee to be playing with them on the same team next year? Right? Isn't that how this works? What? What? You work out in the summer, in particular with the best of the best, to improve your game, to push you yep. in the offseason. Yep. I could almost bet anything. In the NBA, Russell Westbrook and LeBron James will never be teammates. Yep. One guy's won four MVPs and three championships, LeBron James. One guy is the reigning MVP. Paul George just joined his squad. They're just in Vegas having a good time, getting in the gym, getting their work in. I continue, nothing big at all. I continue to be blown away by the fact that they choose Las Vegas to do this because I would get nothing done if my job was to work out in Las Vegas. Nope. But that's just me. We also have this. The Thunder are optimistic that Westbrook will sign a proposed $200 million extension. That's on top of the $28.5 million he's set to make this year. Do you think he will sign this extension, or do you think he will wait until the offseason, become a free agent, and then potentially sign back with the Thunder? Hit the brakes. Okie dokie. I want to point something out that's really clear. Okay. When somebody offers you that type of money, you take it. Are you sure? You don't, you don't, you don't think twice. You don't hesitate. You immediately sign. Whatever you're unhappy about, whatever you're considering, you do it after you sign the contract, not before. Anything in life can happen. Somebody want to offer you, you see, you seen John Wall? He like, 175 million? <laughs> like, where do I sign? You seen Steph Curry? Like, where do I sign? You know who we're not talking about enough? James Harden be getting his paper. Oh, yeah. Don't sleep. Now, he got this big Adidas deal. He just got a mega extension with the Rockets. Russell Westbrook in Vegas, working out with LeBron James, $200 million. They just acquired Paul George after losing KD. Sign. You know what LeBron is saying to him, too? LeBron is just like, Russell, Russell, sign that extension right now. Don't come to the Lakers next year. That's my spot. That's my spot on the <laughs> Lakers, okay? Because we all know that you want to go to the Lakers, but that's my spot. That's what he's telling them right now. Yep. Yep. Also, we have this from Nick Collison, uh, Westbrook's former teammate on the Thunder, or current teammate on the Thunder. He said, quote, As good as a year as he had last year, I think there were also times where he was frustrated with us not playing as well. I think he'll embrace a guy like Paul George because he thinks it's going to make us better as a team. Can you understand why Russell Westbrook was frustrated with his Thunder teammates last year? I can't understand because you go 
early in your career, you get a chance to play with James Harden, who became an MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. You play with Kevin Durant, who was this year's finals MVP. And I mentioned the success that Russell has had. Averaging a triple-double, while it's something that's in vogue for us to talk about, it's not really good when your point guard leads the team in rebounds. No. That's not something that you actually want to have happen, especially when you got 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", guys that you're paying tens of millions of dollars to to rebound the basketball and they're near the paint. So I understand where Collison is coming from, but also, does he have a Lifetime Achievement Award with the organization? He should. Like, he's been there like 15 he should, he years. He keeps getting signed. It's one of those signs like Elton Brand to the Sixers. We're like, is he a coach or a player? Is he going to be coaching or playing? I can't really tell. Because his minutes have gone down and down and down to the point where someone's going to pull him aside and be like, Nick, you're now the assistant coach. We took your uniform. You don't have that anymore. But what is interesting about this whole dynamic is – I felt like last year was Russell Westbrook's revenge year. He was upset about KD leaving. We all saw that. He was like, I'm getting mine. I'm getting this triple-double. Once that became reality, you could tell he was focused on it. And his teammates may have helped him get some rebounds. And he got his MVP. It was close with Harden, but at the end, you could tell that Russell Westbrook was going to get that MVP. So he's scratched that itch. He's checked that box. Now it's like, okay, we need to win some basketball games. Let me, get some, let me win some basketball games now. And when Paul George gets there, you have a very interesting theory about Paul George staying with the Thunder. Why do you think he will stay there? Oh, he's not leaving Russell. You sure? You see what happened when KD left Russell. Oh, man. Paul leave Russell? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's the average <laughs> quadruple double. No question. Both California kids who found ways in their own right to succeed in small market situations. Paul did it in Indiana. He's going to now do it in OKC with Russell. I think they're going to enjoy playing with one another. I think their games are compatible. I think their compared competitive spirit is going to be something that's intriguing, not only for us to watch, but for other people to want to come play with them. Don't be surprised if they're not able to lure another all-star level player to come run with them in OKC. Ooh, I like this. Who are we talking about? We got Isaiah Thomas out there potentially being a free agent. This is interesting. Let, 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 let's make some news. Who could you see joining Russell Westbrook and Paul George to create a super team to challenge the Warriors? Let's go crazy. I know Carmelo Anthony's talked a lot privately about being in a member of the Cavs. Mm -hmm. Now you look at that on paper, that's not necessarily a good idea. You don't want to play behind LeBron James and come off the bench in Cleveland. No. You don't want to do that, Melo. I know Mel I know playing in Houston, you know, they just added CP3, your banana bowl brother. We talked about James Harden. I understand you didn't necessarily see eye to eye with Mike D'Antoni in New York. That may look really good on paper. OKC. Oh, oh here we go. That would be the look for Melo. And here's another thing. I know that the Celtics have the assets to possibly lure somebody like a Boogie Cousins. I would much rather see him running with Russell and PG in OKC. So those are a couple of things I'm just throwing out there to try to put on wax. I love that because it does seem like this Thunder team is one star away from like really getting into the top four in the Western Conference, hosting a playoff series, and just maybe the ball bounces well your way or someone gets injured, you could find yourself in the Western Conference Finals or the NBA Finals. Kyrie Irving, reportedly per Jason Lloyd, is no longer even communicating with the Cavs organization. Jalen Rose. He is getting paid $19 million this year, $20 million next year. If I pay you $19 million, I expect you to at least text me back. Do you think this means the Cavs will definitely trade Kyrie Irving? This means they won't trade him. Ooh, talk to me. He's under contract for two more years. And also, it's the offseason. I don't want to make a bigger issue out of this than it shall be. But he is communicating with him. As a matter of fact, we've been talking about it the last week. You didn't get the news? He wanted to be traded. <laughs> He's like, I didn't communicate. What do you mean I'm not communicating? <laughs> I communicated to you that I don't want to communicate with you anymore. That's the communication. I don't know what else I need to say. I'll write you a letter. What do you need here? You... Oh, no. We have a huge announcement. There's a birthday this weekend, Jalen Rose. Mary Bell. Hicks is turning 100 years old. 
Who is Mary Bell Hicks? My grandmother, the matriarch of my family, an angel on earth, somebody that when I was a youngster, if she thought they said my name on the news, would pop a VHS tape in and record it for five seconds. I have bundles of scrapbooks that detail my entire journey on and off the floor. My number one supporter, obviously along with my mom, she's turning 100 on August 1st. We're really honored to celebrate her. And thank you for the acknowledgement on our program. Shout to you, Ms. Hicks. Take care of Jalen this weekend. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Jalen Rose. What up, though? Are you brushing your hair on national television? Is that a soft move or a boss move? That's a soft move. What? It's time for soft move or boss move. <laughs> First, we have some sound from current Lakers general manager and former fa- teammate of Jalen Rose at Michigan. Rob Palinka had a very interesting comparison for his young Lakers core. Let's listen. Um, I said it's kind of like if you go on YouTube and, you know, you think about Taylor Swift when she was 16 years old, maybe putting her first song you know it's her guitar it's her it's in a little studio and you watch it and you listen to it and you say wow this is going to be a special thing to follow and a really cool narrative to unfold i just i have that sense about the lakers i mean what the way we're playing in, in summer league we have this young core of lonzo ball kuzma you know Hart, um and it's it's a pass first system that luke walton has designed i, I think in an era of, of, of guard play where it's score, you know, if you look at the great point guards, it's score, score, score. I think we're switching now into a mode of pass, pass, pass. That was from the Dan Patrick Show. Jalen Rose, comparing your NBA team to a young Taylor Swift. Soft move or boss move? Soft move. It's a soft move. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were. Gonna, I thought you were going to ride for your ex teammate, but it's a soft move. You got to come up with something better than young Taylor Swift playing an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Basically, what he was saying, and he's going to be on a, a guest on our show soon. Shout out. He was really just talking about Lonzo Ball. <laughs> he was basically saying Lonzo Ball is really good. He's pass first, so therefore everybody else is going to be able to get involved, feel good about themselves. Kuzma has showed his wares, in particular in Summer League. I really liked Hart in college. I think he's an underrated prospect. But ultimately, what's going to turn around the fortunes of the Lakers is not only those players developing, but if they're able to attract all-star level players to come run with them. I just feel like Rob Palenka needs to be like, our team is like a tiger cub. You know what I mean? Just something that's a little, like, a little better than like, like Taylor Swift, you know? <laughs> Moving on, Antonio Brown showed up to training camp being chauffeured in a 1931 what? Rolls-Royce Phantom. What? Is that a soft move or a boss move? That's definitely a boss move. I like the idea that he was driven. That was my favorite part. Is he didn't drive it himself. He sat in the back like an Uber and was just like, yeah, take a left here, take a right here. It was, like, it was, it was you, kind of a boss move. And didn't you say that he's now the highest paid receiver in the game? Yes, I did. No question about it. It comes with the territory. One of the killer bees on the swarm, along with Big Ben and Bell. Obviously, they're going to have Martavius Bryant back in the fold. If he gets reinstated by the league, their offense is going to be explosive. Well, James Harrison got out of the weight room long enough to get into a fire truck and show up at Steelers training camp in a legit fire truck, which got me thinking. I have some advice for NFL players who really want to make a splash when they show up at training camp. Here's what David Jacoby would do if he was a multimillionaire and an NFL player. I'm showing up to training camp not in a fancy car. I'm showing up in a car carrier carrying five or six fancy cars. That way you can get millions of dollars worth. Like, oh, you've got one car that you spent a million dollars on? Guess what? I'm driving a truck that's carrying six cars that each cost a million dollars. Soft move or boss move? That's a boss move. That sounds like something Big Meech has done. 
But here's the other thing for NFL players. If you really want to send a message, strike for guaranteed contract. Yeah, oh, there's that too. There's that too. But first, show up in a car carrier. Moving on. LeBron James is in Las Vegas. His son is also in Las Vegas playing an AAU tournament. During the game, LeBron James comes, walks from the baseline over to the scorer's table to correct the score. What? Correcting the score at your son's AAU game. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. No. And here's what, what no. I want to stress. What? This is something that um, LeVar Ball would have done. Mm-hmm. And just think about it like this. If he did something like that, oh, man, everybody would be exploding with commentary. But LeBron James did it subtle. He did it smooth. And here's the other thing I appreciated. He went back, t- did a tumble with his son. Yep. It wasn't a big deal to him at all. I'm just letting you guys know to keep it right because I'm watching. I kind of feel like when you're LeBron and you're that far away from the scorer's table, you can just let other people figure it out. Like, there's no need to, there's no need to make a scene. You don't got to walk over. Because imagine you're the scorekeeper and it's like a 12-year-old AAU game. LeBron walks over and you get all nervous. He's telling you you did something wrong and you felt like you made LeBron sad. Like, come on, LeBron. Soft move. Just let, it, let, it, let, it, let, it, let that course correct itself, LeBron. It's going to be okay. But I also, the boss move was picking his kid up like that. I do it with my kid all the time. This is great. In Poland, during daylight hours, a gentleman, there's, there's closed circuit surveillance video of a gentleman just walking into a store, grabbing a couple beers, and walking out. But here's the best part. He was completely naked. The what? store clerk just watched him do it. The store clerk was just like, I'm not even going to talk to this guy. You want a couple of beers? Go ahead. I don't want to deal with you. What? Soft move or boss move, being naked, walking into a convenience store, grabbing a couple of beers, and then just walking out. Boss move. Boss move. Because you know what I love about it? It's daylight hours. That's what I love about it. If it's in the middle of the night, like, you know, it's like, oh, he's just drunk and crazy. Who knows what happened? But he's like, it's just, it was just having a good lunch. Just wanted to have a liquid lunch. That's all. And also, just look at it like this. It's harder to ID me if I'm naked. You can't say what I was wearing. And also, apprehending the suspect becomes a little bit tricky when they're naked. I love that angle. They're like, so, they're like, okay, can I get a description of the subject? But it's like, well, what's he wearing? Well, well, he's naked. Just look for and the naked pretty, guy. And it's broad daylight, so he shows a level of confidence yes. that I appreciate. <laughs> yes, uh, he, did, he did show a level of confidence that I appreciate as well. It's time... For the greatest story of the day. This was posted on the Sanctum Mommy Facebook page. It was aggregated by other mommy blogs that I frequent very often. This, we do not know is true, but what I do know is true is this is an account that was posted on this Facebook page. A mom said she didn't have time to run to the store while she was baking brownies for a bake sale. The missing ingredient was milk. So instead of milk, she used breast milk breast milk brownies at the bake sale soft move or boss move boss move (laughs) i'm not so sure no question about it gives them a level of originality and a taste that cannot be duplicated i appreciate this this should be done more often here's why (laughs) there's nothing that you can eat or drink that is better for you than breast milk. This is the greatest story ever on this program. This is As gonna a matter be the- of fact, during the commercial, I'm going to try to find a way to drink some breast milk. <laughs> it was, first, it was... <laughs> what's, what's your approach? You can ask around the studio. Everybody got some breast milk? I don't know if that's a good idea, Jalen. I'm not sure you should do that. Have you ever tried breast milk before? Don't lie. Absolutely. Everybody I'm a mama's has. boy. Every, oh, I mean, after two years old. Have you ever tried breast milk? Yes, I have. Every dad has given it at least a little taste. It is delicious and nutritious. I suggest it for everybody. <laughs> oh, God. Breast milk brownies. Can we just do that topic every day? That is the greatest thing ever. I encourage everyone right now, if you're going to make something that needs milk, Breast milk. And you know what? If you're at the bake sale and you're mad about the breast milk and the brownies, just remember, there could be something else in those brownies as well. Uh. Simone Biles had her wisdom teeth taken out. And when she's done with the surgery, they filmed what happened. Let's take a look. Beep, beep. 
<laughs> Driving an imaginary truck and getting out of people out of the way. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. I like how she was ghost riding the whip. She, she was comfy, too, because she's small. You know I mean? And she had to get the seat way back. She's like, beep, beep. No doubt about it. All she needed was some theme music. And I always appreciate people that are public figures that pull us behind the curtain. That's the toughest thing to do. Be who you are on wax, the person that you clearly are off wax. A lot of times people are so veiled that we don't get a chance to see them when they're vulnerable. I appreciate her posting this. Now, you always say that you're a man of your word, right? Yes, indeed. What are you drinking? Breast milk. <laughs> yes. Yes, how's it taste? <laughs> Sweet, right? And, and here's the thing. What was the it, source? It keeps you less at risk for catching cancer. <laughs> it makes you feel powerful. Okay. Are you real? Fewer problems with weight. You know, Fat Jalen wouldn't like me drinking his breast milk. <laughs> yeah, Fat Jalen would be very upset about this. For those of you who don't know, Jalen Rose has lost like 70 pounds in the last two years. Jaylen stronger bones. <laughs> Long-term protection. <laughs> makes you healthier. It's time to get the people what they want. Part of giving the people what they want is taking questions from the people. We open up our Twitter feed. We go into our subreddit. And if you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave us a voicemail. We play it on the show just like this. Hey, Jalen and Jacoby. This is Peter from Atlanta by way of Detroit. Shout out to Reggie. Shout out to Better Made Chips. How do we go from a 60-win, four-all-star team to none of those players being with the organization and in a rebuilding mode just two years later? And if there is any upside for this next season, what is it? Give us some hope. Give the people what they want. Thanks. Sad Peter in Atlanta wants to know how they went from the top of the Eastern Conference and 60 wins all the way to rebuilding. Peter, first and foremost, make sure they scrap all Gatorade in the locker room and only serve the team breast milk. First and foremost. <laughs> first and foremost, that's the number one, number one rebuilding. Yep. Because you guys are doing something affectionately known as tanking. Mm. And so the Dwight Howard experiment actually set you back. Yep. Because you thought you were bringing him there to be an anchor to take you to the next level after you had the 60-win teams you just described. Now, all of a sudden, he's in Charlotte. You lose your core all-star in Paul Millsap. He's now in Denver. You lose your upcoming player that you helped develop once you fleeced the New York Knicks to get Tim Hardaway Jr. Yep. Now he's back with their team. So they're definitely in rebuilding mode. But in the Eastern Conference, anything can take place, but not for your Hawks this year. I would say, just because Peter does want us to end with a little positivity, that Dennis Schrader could turn into something. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of some of his decision-making, especially late in games, but he could definitely turn into something. And you've got a young Kent Bazemore who I kind of like. Then we're going to go to our subreddit. It's reddit.com slash r slash Jalen and Jacoby, community of people talking about the show. This question comes from Lurker on the Loose. Jacoby, do you guys driving minivans acknowledge each other on the road similar in ways <laughs> that guys on motorcycles or trucks do? Take us behind the curtain. So let me take you behind the curtain into the minivan mafia world. <laughs> There are, like, a little too many minivans out there to give a nod every single time you see someone in a minivan. However, if you do get face-to-face -face at an intersection, you might give a little nod to a fellow minivan, especially if it's a dad driving. You know, if it's a dad, I'll give a minivan to minivan, not dad nod. But nothing that happens, one thing I learned about the minivan, people respect the minivan man like when you come to a four-way intersection and let's imagine that everybody stopped at the exact same time without hesitation gas pedal i just go because people see the minivan and just get out of the way i mean sports cars motorcycles big rig trucks everybody sees the minivan and just respects it you know what i don't have to do i don't have to put stickers on the back of my car to show you how many people are in my family you can just look at my van and be like oh he's got a big family this kid's in there i'm getting out of the way <laughs> this one's from Twitter. King Will wants to know, what are your thoughts on the WNBA? Do these players get respect they deserve? 
What they don't get that they deserve is more money. Money, exactly. They need more money. And if the NBA is is saying, look, we've also got the WNBA and it, we're going to pool this NBA money and basketball-related money is going to get pooled and spread out you know, everywhere, you can spread some of that NBA money over to the WNBA players. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. They wouldn't have to go overseas in the off summer and play in Russia or wherever to make a living year-round. So let me get this right. The NBA is thriving now more than ever. The popularity Mm -hmm. of the sport, it's at its height. There are players that are making multi-millions of dollars that probably could walk past you on the street and you wouldn't know who they are. And I'm happy to say that. You mean to tell me y'all can't take care of the WNBA players? Not even a little bit. They have to go overseas like a second job Uh, in the offseason in order to make money? Two things to to say. To play in the WNBA? How about Diana Taurasi? I remember a couple of years ago, she was playing overseas and it was like 150% more of her salary to the point where she like, I'm not going to even play in the WNBA. Like, that's embarrassing. So one thing for basketball players that like you might have like starred on your high school team, maybe even played in college or whatever, and you watch the WNBA and you think to yourself, oh, I would wax these girls. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like that's, no. I, I cannot stand this dude at the gym talking about, oh, if I was in the W, they can't even duck. If I was in the WNBA, I would tear it up. If that is the most ignorant stance I have ever heard. It makes me so frustrated. It's like, do you understand how good these women are at this sport? Do you understand what they do all day, every day is make jump shots and work on their game and play defense? And do you think that you as an accountant that was great at basketball basketball 10 years ago in like you know eastern kentucky high school or whatever no you would get waxed do and not bring it a to a wba player to think about it when you're watching your favorite nba performer that isn't a high flyer that isn't a slam dunker that doesn't play above the rim like jalen rose for example or like a kyrie Irving or a steph curry that level of play happens frequently in the wnba I would like to see them get paid a lot more money. Finally, I love this from our subreddit. This is why we have a subreddit. This picture was brought to us by a gentleman named Anton Mark. He said, David Beckham has had some questionable fashion choices and spent the early 2000s going through a hip-hop phase. He even tried out cornrows. His question, soft move or boss move, David Beckham wearing a do-rag to meet Prince Charles. Soft move or boss move, do rag Beckham. Boss move. I, I love do it. Do it for the culture. I love it. I love yes. it. Do rags are not cultural. And also, it's like he's like, okay, I'm going to meet British royalty today. What should I wear? Should I wear this nice normal blue suit that would go unremarked upon, nah. or should I wear this do rag with the extra long do rag flap coming out the back? But I will say this for men. I hear that when guys frequently change their hairstyles, like one day you might see them, they may be rocking a fro or then a mohawk, then a shortcut, then a long cut, then a part in their hair. They kind of figuring out their identity. Mm. And so that's exactly what you said in the question that you teed up. David Beckham was kind of finding himself. He was going through an insecure phase. So, especially for the ladies, that's a tip. When a dude is switching up his hairstyle, he's searching for his identity. He's feeling a little bit uncomfortable about himself. I think that David Beckham found his identity. Do rag David. You know what I learned this week? Breast milk does a body good. Breast milk. (laughs) Have some breast milk this weekend. Enjoy. Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN2 at 2. We'll be back on Monday. (laughs) 